Some employers are entitled to capped exemptions from FBT under Section 57A of the FBT AA 1986. Megan works for a GST registered public hospital and during the last FBT year received a car benefit of $15,000 and a car parking benefit of $4,000. The car parking benefit is an excluded benefit, and so the car benefit of $15,000 is therefore the only benefit included in Megan's individual fringe benefits amount. As Megan's employer can claim GST input credits, this amount is then grossed up by the type 1 factor to determine Megan's aggregate fringe benefits taxable amount. Megan's employer then subtracts the applicable FBT exemption cap to determine the non-exempt fringe benefits taxable amount that applies to Megan. FBT is then levied on this taxable amount. The Section 57A FBT exemption is provided to certain employers including public benevolent institutions, public hospitals, certain non-profit hospitals, health promotion charities, and public ambulance services. Rather than fully exempting FBT for these employers, there is a cap or limit on the grossed up taxable amount of fringe benefits that can be provided to each employee. The applicable cap per employee depends on the type of employer. A smaller cap applies to public hospitals, certain non-profit hospitals, and public ambulance services. A larger cap applies for public benevolent institutions and registered health promotion charities. To determine the benefit amount that will attract FBT, the employer first needs to calculate each employee's individual fringe benefits amount. This is the sum of each employee's fringe benefits that are not excluded benefits under Section 5E, Subsection 3. Benefits such as meal entertainment that is not salary packaged or car parking are excluded benefits for this purpose and so are not included in the calculation of each employee's individual fringe benefits amount. The remaining benefits are then grossed up by either the type 1 or type 2 factor, whichever applies, to determine the aggregate employee fringe benefits taxable amounts. The employer then subtracts the amount of the cap. If the resulting amount is greater than zero, FBT would be levied on that amount and the employer would be required to lodge an FBT return. Note that a separate grossed up cap per employee applies for such non-profit employers in respect of salary packaged meal entertainment and entertainment facilities leasing expense. Meal entertainment includes such items as food, drink, and travel related to entertainment. Entertainment facilities leasing expenses include hiring a corporate box or other premises for providing entertainment. Where the amount of such salary sacrificed benefits exceeds this separate grossed up cap, the excess is included in the calculation of the value of benefits provided to the employee to determine whether the general FBT exemption cap noted earlier has been exceeded. In addition, these salary sacrificed amounts are reportable and so need to appear on the employee's PAYG payment summary. To recap, certain employers are FBT exempt up to a relevant cap. The general FBT exemption cap applies on each employee's grossed up benefits amount, other than excluded fringe benefits. FBT is then levied on any grossed up amounts above the relevant cap.